about you. This is 104.7 Minster FM. At one, a new row has broken out over proposed travellers' sites in Napton and Dunnington. It's 21 years since commercial radio first came to North Yorkshire. The first of four stations was set up in York. Minster FM broke a nine-year BBC monopoly. Well, now we'll go over to the news desk for the rest of the day's news from your part of the calendar region. The chairman of the board was one Richard Whiteley of Countdown fame. The station also had ties with Calendar and Yorkshire Television, which supplied the news. Richard's partner and former East End and Angels star Catherine Apanovich was one of the first presenters. She's returned to the station for the first time since she left. I'm sort of half recognising where I am, where Minster was. And then I'm not because when I first came here, this industrial park, which is where Minster is based, didn't have all these trees. It was very bare and very quiet and it was so brand new. And loads of people were here. Masses and masses of people, champagne and fuss and everything was going on. And then the very next week when I came to do the radio show, it was me and the cleaner. 104.7, Minster FM. Richard was so proud of being part of Minster FM because he had tried previously um, with bids for other radio stations and never got them. And it was actually a bit of a shock to him when he got it because he spent so much time, you know, so many different bids for various commercial stations and when he got it. But he was absolutely pleased as punch. He was really very passionate about radio, actually, was Richard, and he loved the whole idea of it. Hello, how are you? Very well. Welcome to Minster FM after all these years. Where's reception gone? Oh, well, yeah, it used to be here, didn't <laughs> yes. it, originally? It's, yeah. uh, it's Not kind of automated. So how long ago were you here then? Well, I was actually here on the very first day. Wow. So it was all smelt of paint. <laughs> That's what they say about the royal family where it smells of paint. So it was all very clean and new and there were loads of people here and it was champagne and it was all very exciting and of course it was all started on American Independence Day as well, yeah, so it was just very exciting. So that's that's my memory of being here. The faces have changed a little bit since 1992. Yes, I think because you were all probably in, in school still. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> what, yeah. what time slot did you do? Um, I did uh, the breakfast show on a Saturday, and uh, it was it was just empty. There was nobody ever here. It was just me, and then eventually another presenter would come in, and I was always so pleased to see them. It was somebody to talk to. I always felt I was on my own. So Catherine, when you um, opened the radio station, what was the reaction from the public like, the first commercial radio station in Europe? People were quite excited because you'd, you'd, obviously we'd heard commercial radio before, but not something that solely belonged to York and Harrogate and North Yorkshire. So that was great. People loved it and it was a bit trendy and it was a bit cool really, I think. Don't know why I was on that. All about great music, all about you. 104.7 Minster FM plays Madness and Driving in My Car on the 9 to 5. No 21 years later and Minster FM is part of the UKRD group, which also owns the stations that serve the rest of North Yorkshire. It's a parent company that's committed to providing a truly local service. That's getting more and more unusual nowadays, as many other stations have merged into big brands like Capital and Heart. I think the key to Minster FM really is that, as our slogan says, we are all about North Yorkshire and we, we do really focus on the local area. So many radio stations these days elsewhere in the country have been bought out and are being networked from London. Everything you hear coming out of the speakers comes from these studios here in York, so we are really a truly local radio station. I feel quite nostalgic actually being back because the studios are really the same. I mean, radio studios very rarely change. They've got the soundproof boxes. Um, what amuses me is that the lads here, the girls, seem to sit in the studio in darkness. But for some reason, radio presenters like that. I am the opposite. I like all the lights on, the windows, curtains drawn, and I used to like to be it to be as light as possible. Whereas these chaps, they like that dark and almost plain misty for me feel to their radio presenting, which is it is quite opposite to me. But it really is it, it's very similar. I bet they haven't changed the wallpaper. 